So let's jump right in. So why am I not making any sales? Um, this training is going to be all about how to troubleshoot your funnel. And when I say funnel, so for the benefit of anybody that's brand new to affiliate marketing or isn't quite sure what a funnel is or how it works, I'm going to actually take you through my funnel during this process so you can see what it actually looks like, um, you know, beginning to end. Uh, but basically a funnel. So when people hear the word website, they tend to think of a website like Amazon.com or, um, you know, something funky where it has a bunch of options and pictures and things to click on and create an account and all of that. A sales funnel is specifically built to convert visitors into customers, into paying customers. And so there aren't a ton of bells and whistles and a bunch of things to distract you and things to click off of and leave the page. Basically, a sales funnel is a simple two-page website. The first page of the website collects the email of the potential customer so that you as the affiliate marketer can continue to follow up with that potential customer via email and continue to provide value to them and promote whatever products that you are promoting. Uh, on the second page of your sales funnel is called the bridge page or it's also called the thank you page. And basically, that's just a bridge between the opt-in page and the actual offer, the actual sales page. So the sales page, that is where the product, you know, the business whose product that you're promoting, that's where that lives. So it's basically a handoff from you, the affiliate marketer. You're gonna talk a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your story, and then hand off your potential customer to the sales page. And the sales page, you don't own it it's you know it's owned and operated by the business whose product that you're promoting so once you've handed it off to them um you know you're they're now leaving your funnel and they're in the hands of the business does that make sense hopefully all right so that is what a sales funnel is the like i said the whole the job of a sales funnel is to collect people's email addresses and then convert them from a visitor to a paying customer so they either give the email, give their email address or they leave the page. Um, that's, that's like the whole point of it. So no distractions, no bells and whistles. All right, so whenever people ask um, like, why am I not getting sales? That's a really vague and nebulous question. So that's like going to a mechanic and saying, Hey, um, can you tell me what I need to do to fix my car? It's not working. Like as the mechanic, you're puzzled and left wondering, hmm, like does it not start? Does it not go into drive? Uh, is the tire flat? Like it could be any number of things. So instead of thinking of it like, well, I'm not getting any sales or it's not working, we're gonna look at exactly how to identify what the problem is and how to tweak things within your funnel in order to fix the I'm not getting any sales thing. So which which is which? I also picked this amazing public domain witch clip art. Um, but what I wanna kind of break down today is that there are multiple parts of your funnel that could need a tune-up. And within those parts of your funnel, which we're gonna talk about in just a sec, there are multiple components, if you will, um, that could need a tune-up. So just like with your car, um, if you have a busted wheel, maybe your rim is bent. Maybe the tire it has a hole in it. Um, it could be any number of things. So just the tire itself, there are still component parts within that tire that could be the problem and you need to know how to troubleshoot even deeper than just saying, oh, the tire is busted. All right, so this is the lovely sales funnel that I created on my iPad. Um, but think of this as your affiliate marketing vehicle. So at the top of our funnel is content, and that's stuff like creating a video on TikTok, creating um, posts on Facebook, creating a video on YouTube, creating content on Instagram, or it could even be running paid ads. We're not gonna talk about paid ads, we're just gonna use organic or free traffic um, for this example, but uh, the content is like the top part of your funnel. Um, next, again, comes the opt-in page. So when you create content, let's use TikTok as an example because that tends to be something everyone's familiar with. Um, 
But when you create content on TikTok, you're gonna make your content, make your video, and at the end, you're gonna have a call to action or a CTA. And that CTA sometimes will say, click the link in my bio for XYZ thing. And if people click the link in your bio, that link will take them to your opt-in page. Because again, you wanna cl always collect people's email addresses prior to sending them along to the rest of your funnel. That can't be, un like that can't be, um, that's the most important asset that you can have as an affiliate marketer is your email list. So I just wanted to highlight that. Uh, after your opt-in page, people go to your bridge page or your thank you page. And that's again, part of your funnel where you have a video of yourself saying, um, you know, thanks for making it to this page. I'm really excited to talk to you about, you know, whatever thing is on the next page. This is how it changed my life and this is how it could change yours, blah, blah, blah. The next page, like I said, after the bridge page, you're handing off uh, your potential customer to the actual business whose product that you're promoting. And we'll go through a real world example of that in a sec. Uh, and then at the bottom is the conversions, meaning people are converting from a visitor to a paying customer. So I made that little line to delineate that your content, your opt-in page and your bridge page, you have full control over that. You can make that anything you want. You want that stuff to be using messaging that's effective and that's what we're gonna talk about. But the sales page and the conversions themselves, you really don't have control over that. Um, you can influence conversions with the first three items with your content, opt-in page and bridge page, but you can't, you're not being able, you're not selling, like you're not on the phone collecting payment from people. That belongs to the business whose product that you're promoting. So that stuff is a little bit out of your hands. Something that I also wanna talk about because it's gonna be relevant when I'm showing you an example is the buyer's journey. So think about um, these three phases because they're gonna be apparent as we go through our example. So the awareness phase of the buyer journey, um, that's basically the potential customer becoming aware that they have a problem and that you, the potential solution to that problem exists. So maybe somebody scrolling through TikTok and they've just like had the worst day at work and they're so irritated. And then they see a video that says, you do hate your nine to five. And they're like, what? Oh, they're talking to me. Now they're consciously aware, like they just use the words, the language that I use inside my own head when I'm talking about my problem, which is I hate my job. So now they're aware, they have this conscious awareness of their problem and they're able to articulate it. And now they're, they're aware that you exist because you caught their attention by speaking that same language in your content. Uh, next is consideration. So they're thinking about um, all of the different solutions that could exist to that problem, quitting a new job, finding a new one, uh, or quitting their existing job and finding a new one, um, starting an online business, moving back in with their parents, whatever. Then there's the decision phase, which is where they have decided on a course of action, which may or may not involve purchasing the product that you're promoting. And again, I just like to call your attention to the beautiful public domain clip art of the guy on a journey. Alrighty. So the gas that powers your affiliate marketing vehicle. And I, I love this, um, this graphic because it shows someone fishing. So they're hooking a fish, but they're also being consumed by a gator at the same time. And I just love that. All right. So if you guys are familiar with Russell Brunson, that guy, I highly recommend anything he creates, any content or any training that he does. He's fantastic. And he invented, like he founded ClickFunnels. So he knows a thing or two about sales funnels and about the marketing and the selling process. So he has something that he calls hook story offer. And I'm gonna talk about what hook story offer means and then we're gonna dive into an example. So a hook is just what it sounds like. You can kind of think of it as like, um, like what, when I was using the example of like, you're scrolling through TikTok and then somebody says, do you hate your nine to five? Yes, yes I do. 
So a hook is something that grabs the attention of your audience, grabs the attention of your prospective customer. Um, and when you're making content, just something I want to mention as an aside, but when you're making content, that hook should come pretty immediately in the first like couple seconds. Like if you're on TikTok, as an example, sh should come within the first one to two seconds of your video. If it doesn't come soon enough or it's if it's not immediately apparent to your prospective uh, or your target audience, your prospective customer, why they should continue watching, they'll probably just scroll through because we all have the attention span of a goldfish. Um, the story, so your story, people love storytelling. That's why people love movies. That's why we love TV and we binge TV shows on, you know, endlessly. But story, your story that you tell in your content or throughout your funnel helps your audience to connect more with you. It makes you more of a human or makes you more relatable. And it also demonstrates how your offer can help them. Um, so a good story tends to include a uh, before, like for example, yeah, before I found affiliate marketing, I was just kind of struggling through life at my job that I didn't like, feeling like I wasn't living a life of purpose and just being really depressed and hopeless. The epiphany came when I realized I need to make money online because that will give me the freedom to work anywhere that I want and not have to be tied to a 40 hour a week job where I'm at an office. The aftermath that has like a negative connotation, but it doesn't it, it doesn't necessarily have to be negative. Um, in my case, it was positive. So after the epiphany of I want to learn how to make money online, I found affiliate marketing. I dove in head first, 100 percent. And kind of the aftermath was I built an online business really quickly and was able to quit my nine to five. My life was literally changed. Um, so that would be the story that I would tell. Uh, I also want to mention show, don't tell. And this is something I'm learning more and more, especially on TikTok. If I'm just sitting there with my phone, uh, looking at my audience and saying, hey, I want to tell you the story of how I quit my job. And I just recited what I told you guys right now. That's boring. People will not, they don't want to hear a talking head. Showing would be like me, you know, talking to myself. So I would have like the little text bubble at the top that says, Barb, you need to quit your job, girl. And then I'd be over here again, receiving that, that uh, conversation and saying, girl, you are right. Let's try to make money online. So something where you're showing the audience where it's more like a movie or a TV show or a sh uh, like a short commercial rather than you as a talking head just sitting there talking to your audience tends to be a lot more effective because that is storytelling. Uh, the last part, the offer. So that part calls potential customers to take action to get something that you have that you can give them. And so I'm going to show you exactly what I mean in just a sec. So hook story offer, grab their attention, tell them why they should care, tell them do this thing and I'll give you a thing basically. All right, started from the bottom. Now we here, let me make sure I didn't skip anything. I did not. Alrighty. So in order to figure out or to, I guess, to craft your sales funnel in a way that's going to be effective, you need to start with the product that you're promoting. Okay. So, um, start with the sales page or the website of the product that you're promoting or the business whose product you're promoting. And I'm going to show you a real life example right now. So like I was, talking about or alluded to a little bit earlier, we can't control the messaging or the branding of the product that we choose to promote. That product belongs to another business. And as much as we might want to tell them how to run their business, we can't. We're literally just doing the marketing for them, you know? So we have to tailor our content and our message to fit that brand. <clears throat> so I'm going to use legendary marketer as an example. <clears throat> So let me go over here. So I pulled up the Legendary Marketer website. If you're not familiar with who Legendary Marketer is, they are online marketing education. And that's actually how I started learning affiliate marketing was through Legendary Marketer. So they're basically, they do online courses and online education. So just as an FYI, 
Legendary Marketer is also something that I promote as an affiliate. So again, we're just using this as an example. So if I were going to create a funnel from scratch, what I would do is go over to the Legendary Marketer's website and what I, I'm looking for is words and phrases and kind of overall vibe that Legendary Marketer has because I want to emulate that to make my, my messaging congruent or the same, you know, matches up with Legendary Marketer's messaging. Because one, probably the biggest thing that will make your funnel fail is that your messaging is not congruent throughout your entire funnel, starting with the content and ending with the sales page, which is, we'll get to the sales page in a second. So what is Legendary Marketer? So our mission, help people start an online business or grow an existing business, yada yada. We help people learn necessary personal business and marketing skills. All right, so let's check out their programs because that's really what I care about. Alrighty, so the 15 day online business builder challenge. So I'm gonna make this screen a little smaller. And I actually made this, uh, this document a little bit earlier. So I'm just gonna set this aside. All right, but what I want to do is literally go through and take notes about the messaging about this product. So the 15 day online business builder challenge is an action oriented experience. So over here, I wrote down action oriented that will prepare you to start a business and begin earning money online in 15 days. There's nothing else like this. So nothing else like this, unique, one of a kind. The 15 day challenge will save you countless hours, weeks, months, even years from sifting through the insane overload of information online from shady sources. So all that stuff, sifting through information, you know, saves you time, sift through information overload, um, we'll give you a powerful training video each day. So powerful training video each day, along with purposeful assignments. So they're really distinguishing purposeful from like busy work. So purposeful assignments over here, along with a business plan advisor who will personally help you develop your business plan and get it into action. So got that part right here about the business plan advisor. By day 15, you'll be equipped with knowledge. Most take years to gain a clear business plan and the confidence to put it into action. So again, the knowledge learning curve is drastically shortened. You'll have a clear plan and confidence to put it into action. Oh yeah, sorry, my head's in the way. My, <laughs> I forgot, thank you, Heather. But do you see what I'm doing? I'm literally just um, looking at the messaging for the product that I'm promoting and taking key words and phrases that I wanna keep in mind um, when I am creating my own opt-in page and bridge page and also when I'm creating content. Okay, so I'm just I'm gonna minimize this, but again, I'm just kind of grabbing snippets from the actual legendary marketer website. All right, and if I click get started, so as if I'm going to sign up. Well, I'm not actually gonna do that. But we're gonna come back to what the actual sales page where you would sign up. We'll come back to that in a second. Okay. So again, like physically writing down or copying and pasting into a Word document specific words and phrases because we wanna keep that stuff uh, top of mind when we're creating the content um, because we don't want our messaging to deviate. You know, for example, if we're creating content on TikTok that's like, hey, you can get rich without doing any work. And then people are like, yeah, that's a great hook. <laughs> you know, people would absolutely click on your link to get to your funnel, right? But then they're gonna start seeing messaging throughout your funnel if it's, well, actually, let me take a step back. If you have that on your opt-in page, get rich quick, little, like, little to no work required. People are like, heck yeah, I want that opt-in. Then they're gonna get to your bridge page. All your messaging could be the same. 
I want to, like, you'll get rich quick. I did. And you won't have to do any work practically. Go to the next page. And then now it's all of a sudden it's talking about building a business. That's going to be work. Creating a business plan. Like, so the messaging, the messaging I can control was very different than the messaging for the end product that the customer is going to see. I should say the potential customer, because there's no way in heck that they're going to buy after what I was telling them they were going to get is so drastically different than what they're seeing on the sales page. Hope that makes sense. Um, so grabbing those words and phrases and thinking of how does this benefit your target audience? Another really quick tip that I want to give you some of my content that has done the best that has directly led to the most, um, sales or leads or conversation, you know, DMS and, um, ongoing conversations with people has been the content where when you make a video, like on TikTok, talk to yourself as if you were talking to yourself before you started your affiliate marketing journey. Because if you don't know who your ideal customer is, it's probably you six months ago, eight months ago, a year ago. Do you know what I mean? And so some of the best content that I've had the most engagement with and the most success with has been when I'm really dialed in and creating a video on TikTok, for example, where I'm talking to me at the end of December, when I knew I wanted to make a change, but I just didn't know what I wanted to do or how to get started. So if you don't know who your target audience is, it's probably you before you uh, found this product that you are promoting that has made a change in your life or your confident is going to make a change in your life. So just something to keep in mind when you are creating content, um, kind of marry the the language of the product that you're promoting like just what we grabbed from the legendary marketer site marry that with your own authentic message and your authentic self J join those two things together and you'll start to see success okay so i think now would be a good time for me to show you my well i'll wait until after this slide so now we're on, we're working our way backwards. So we went from the legendary marketer sales page and I'm actually going to skip this slide because it's the exact same as the opt-in page. And now I want to show you my sales funnel. Okay. So I'm going to go over here. All right. Okay. So remember all the words that we just took from the legendary marketer site. Um, so action oriented, nothing like this, save you time, sift through information overload, da, 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 da. Um, so my target audience is people who are like me, maybe about eight or nine months ago. So people who are unhappy with life, they feel discontent at their job. They want to make a change, but they just don't really know where to get started, you know? So my hook on my opt-in page, this is my opt-in page. So when, I, when I'm driving traffic, when I tell people, hey, click the link in my bio, this is where they will start. So they will go from TikTok, they will click the link in my bio, and they will come here. So the first thing they see is live a life of financial freedom. And if you guys follow me on TikTok and you've seen my content, you know I talk about financial and time freedom a lot. <laughs> like I'm very much about that. Um, so live a life of financial freedom. That's my hook. So your hook should be congruent with, again, using legendary marketer as an example because this is my legendary marketer funnel. But that's congruent with the messaging, the legendary marketer messaging that we were just looking at. You know, life changing, starting an online business. Um, that's kind of part of their messaging. So ever wanted to have a super profitable online business without creating products, carrying inventory, dealing with customers, or spending tons of time on activities that don't generate revenue. My name is Barb McGowan. I help regular everyday people build extremely profitable affiliate marketing businesses, even if they have no experience or list. Um, so that is kind of my story. And then this is a little bit more about my story. So excited to share with you. Da, 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 da. These are the strategies that allowed me to quit my nine to five job within six months of starting my own online business. So, that's again, the story, and that's congruent with 
the legendary marketer, like the end uh, product that potential customers are going to see. Um, and then this is like the offer. So there's this offer. So if you're interested in becoming a high ticket super affiliate, click the button below to watch a free presentation. What's inside the exact framework. So that's the offer. So it's saying, okay, potential customer, take this action if you want this thing. So if you want the, this free presentation, that's, that's the offer. All right, so if we enter, don't y'all go emailing my personal email now. So we're gonna go to the next page, which is my bridge page. And we're not gonna watch my video. You can watch it um, like outside of this right now, just cause I don't wanna take up a, too much time. But here's my hook. So the one thing most struggling digital entrepreneurs are missing is the right online business model. So right here, this is giving a little bit more um, story. So this is my hook. So remember, eliminating the noise from shady sources. Um, that was one of the kind of phrases that Legendary Marketer uses. Let me see what some of the other ones were. Yeah, sift through information overload. Um, that's what this one says to me. So that's my hook. Here's a little bit of my story. And if anybody has already seen this page in my funnel, you can, uh, you know what it says, but it's basically saying a little bit about me. Like I worked in as a manager in retail. I had a high stress job in investment management that nearly killed me. Then I became a teacher. When COVID hit, it made me realize my job was not secure. I needed and wanted to find a way to learn, earn a living online. Um, th this is just testimonial videos. So um, again, just more storytelling. And so this is a little bit about Dave, who's the founder of Legendary Marketer. So he is going to um, like give this presentation that talks exactly, talks about high ticket affiliate marketing. And then you click start now. And anyone who wants to start a profitable online business but doesn't know where to begin. So here's the hook and the story, and then there's gonna be a little bit more storytelling in this video, and then the offer, which is, you know, buy the $7, 15 day business builder challenge. So, um, I'm gonna leave that open. Alrighty, but you can kind of see there, for each part of the funnel, I'm gonna go back to my slides real quick, but for each part of the funnel, so the sales page, which Legendary Marketer owns, the bridge page, which was the one with my video that told a little bit about my personal story, and the opt-in page, the messaging was the same. And each part, so the sales page that Legendary Marketer owns, my bridge page that I own, with my video on it, my opt-in page, which collects people's email addresses, each each part of that funnel has a hook, a story, and an offer that compels people to the next stage, to the next part of, you know, the next step of, of my funnel. Um, I'm hope, hopefully all of this is making sense and we're, our time is good, so. <clears throat> All right, and we just talked about opt-in page. All right, so now I wanna talk about content because two things. Number one, if your content is no good, meaning it's not getting a lot of views, it's not getting a lot of engagement, the rest of your funnel could be fantastic and you will never know because you're not gonna drive any traffic through your funnel. That said, you can have horrible content, meaning it's not getting a lot of views or it's not getting a lot of engagement and you're not able to drive a lot of traffic to your funnel and the rest of your funnel could be garbage. So content is the most important thing to make sure, like to troubleshoot your funnel and to test it and see what works best with your funnel. So content is 
incredibly important. It's incredibly important to have good content that drives traffic. Okay, so we're gonna talk about using analytics and we're gonna just kind of talk about this uh, really quickly, but using analytics to determine where the breakdown is happening in your content. So when you create content, let's use again TikTok as an example, but you need to have your hook, story, offer, just like we've been talking about, then you need to have your, your, your offer is gonna be your call to action, right? So you wanna include a call to action at the end of like each TikTok video. It doesn't always have to be, hey, click the link in my bio. It shouldn't be because people will get tired of hearing that and just ignore you. Um, but you can actually see and you can't trace it back to which video people watched and then took action. Unfortunately, that'd be really nice. But you can kind of gauge how you're doing uh, from a day-to-day -day basis. So, um, But after you let people know, okay, hook, story, offer, call to action, click the link in my TikTok bio to get XYZ thing or to learn more, whatever, then they will click on your profile. That's the first step. They have to click on your profile to click the link in your bio. Um, and then they will click on the link that's in your bio and that will take, uh, take them to your opt-in page. So we're going to look at TikTok analytics. So this is on desktop. It's going to look a little bit different if you're looking at it on your phone, <clears throat> but I, you can just go up here to your little profile picture, view analytics. That'll take you to this page. So I just want to show you two different videos so you can kind of start to understand how to tell if your content is doing well and if it's not, at what point is it, like where's the snag happening? Is it your hook, your story, or your offer? Okay, so I want to come down here to this video. Okay, and let me see if I can scroll up. All right, and don't worry, the part I think that uh, my face is covering is not the most vital. Okay, so this is a 43 second, 43 point whatever second video. Has 466 views, 32 likes, 17 comments. So we want to look at the average time watched. So the average person watched 10.9 seconds of this video which is not super long. It's like less than a, 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 yeah, just about a quarter of the video. So knowing that we have our hook in the first like two seconds and then we start telling the story and then we have the offer toward the end, what does that tell us? Tells us the hook was pretty good. The story, meh, you know, maybe the story was just too long and drawn out. Maybe, and I can tell you for sure that this is why, it's because I was walking around the block and I was just talking head the whole time. In retrospect, what I should have done is done more pattern interrupts, like have things flash on the screen or turn the video to a squirrel on the tree with an arrow pointing at it, you know, whatever. The, the point is our attention spans are finite, especially on social media and especially on TikTok. So just doing the talking head thing um, especially if you do it all in one take without cutting in between so that it gives the uh, appearance of multiple, you know, it's kind of like taking a breath in between sentences. Um, so if I were going to remake this video to get more watch time, and watch time is the most important metric on TikTok. So if you want more people, if you want your videos pushed out to the For You page more, if you want more people to see your content and you want more engagement and to get your message out in front of more people, that is the most important metric is watch time. So you really need to get into your hook quick, get to the point, how, like, why should people stop and listen to what you have to say in the first two seconds? Um, then go into your story, the story, and it's, you still kind of need to rehook them as you tell the story, you know? So you need to keep it really uh, quick and really interesting and also use um, like stickers or moving elements or change up your camera angle, that kind of a thing to really keep people's attention. Cause just doing the talking head, which is something that I'm really bad about, um, is not that effective. All right. And then 9.3% of people, hopefully my huge head's not in the way, but um, it's over here. So 9.3% of people watched the whole video. So not great. 
And then on the left-hand side, if I scroll down, you can see that the For You page accounted for 56% of the, of the views for this video. Okay, so now I want to contrast that with this video. So this video got tons of, it vastly different. So like 53,000 views, over 2,000 likes, so on and so forth. So the average watch time for an 8.38 second video was 7.4 seconds. So that's like 90%, let's say. And the percentage of people who watched the full video was almost 34%. So a lot more people watched the, this video in its entirety. And that means the hook was good, the story was good, and it was, the offer it is it remains to be seen because you can't really gauge uh, how good the offer is by looking at this screen. But I'm going to take you over to um, another screen really quick. So I went over here to overview on the left hand side and then I looked over here to profile views. And now I just forgot when I posted that video. Hold on one sec. August 9th. So. I posted this video, the one I just showed you that was super awesome, August 9th. If I go back over to overview and profile views, okay, so August 9th, well, would you look at that? See how there's this huge spike in my profile views? So I had 1,217 people click on my bio, not the link in my bio, but just go to look at my profile on August 9th. That is a direct result of that video doing so well that I posted on that day. Um, and I'm going to show you guys my Beacons account real quick. Okay. Okay, hush. Let's look at analytics. Okay, and I'm gonna look at the last 30 days. So in my TikTok bio, when people click my link, this is what they see. So I'm gonna open that in a new tab. So when people click the link in my TikTok bio, they see this. Start here and get my free affiliate marketing course in my Facebook group. So. Um, and actually I'm probably going to take out the start here and actually I'm going to take out beacons altogether. That's a conversation for another day, but we really want to just give people one or two options max. So it's everything else. There's no distraction, nothing to click on. Just start here and get my free affiliate mar marketing course in my Facebook group. That's it. Anyway, so going back to analytics and going back, I want to look at guess what day this is okay so and to caveat this beacons uses a different time zone and so all these page views are actually for um part of august 9th so here's august 9th 267 people actually clicked the link in my bio and that also carries over to august 10th which 447 people so again it's a little bit of a it's a little bit tricky because Beacons has a different time zone, so some of that will spill over to the next day, even though it technically was from the ninth. Um, so yeah, you can see a huge increase in the number of people. So I'm seeing that that content for the ninth, that video that I posted that went, you know, got 50,000 views or whatever. Um, I can look and see, okay, it got 50,000 views, dope. But that, I also saw that, um, 1,217 of those 50,000 views actually visited my profile on TikTok. And of those 12, uh, 1,200 people that visited my TikTok profile, uh, I'm gonna just call this like 600. So about half clicked the link in my bio. So pretty good so far. So my offer was pretty good. Whatever I was you know, offering people that they could get if they took this action, they were taking that action. All right, and now let's click or look here and see. 
So I actually wasn't promoting legendary marketer, which is what that start here button is. And yet still, I'm going to say 200 and something people. <clears throat> yeah, or close to 300. So I don't know, 250, let's say. 250 people clicked on the start here link, which would have taken them to my opt-in page for my legendary marketer funnel. And I don't promote that anymore. Then, so 125 plus 223. So I don't know, let's call it 350. 350 people clicked on my link to the button that says get my free affiliate marketing course in my Facebook group. So I can kind of gauge from that content that I created that my hook was good, my story was good, and my offer was good. So that's the process that I would go through to um, kind of troubleshoot whether or not con my content is good. Uh, good. You can have good content that's entertaining and people still won't um, watch it, but you know, to each his own. Um, what did I quit promoting? Um, I kind of quit, I don't promote it. Yeah, the, it's like the three day challenge. Um, but yeah, I won't go like super into detail, but I'm, I just have one front end product and it's um, Legendary Marketer. Alrighty, so hopefully all that makes sense. But you can kind of see going back to the funnel. So the funnel is shaped like a funnel. We call it a funnel because it starts off really broad. You know, we had I had 50,000 people view that piece of content. Then the number of people that actually went to my profile was 1,200. So you're seeing it's getting a little bit thinner, you know, like this. Then the number of people that actually clicked my link in my bio was half that. And then a smaller percentage and a smaller percentage and so on and so forth. So you can see why it's called a funnel because it's shaped like a funnel. It starts broad and it gets real narrow. Um, alrighty. So analytics, super important. It's boring to some people, but it's really relevant to see if your, if your content is not performing, um, or if people are, if your content's doing great, but you're not getting, you know, making any sales or getting conversions, um, analytics is the first place you should be visiting or setting up if you have not set it up. So I have three kind of separate boxes. So your content, whatever platform you're using to create content, or if you're doing paid ads, that is the platform that will have your analytics, you know, for the content you're creating. Just like what we were looking at with, uh, with TikTok analytics. So TikTok has their own analytics. Facebook does. Instagram, everybody and their mother does. Whatever platform you're using to create content will have analytics that you can look at to kind of figure out um, how your content is doing, really, beyond just getting views or likes. Um, your opt-in page and your bridge page, again, that's the part of your sales funnel that you, as the affiliate marketer, build yourself and can con control. So you can change the messaging, change the colors, change the images or the videos. Um, I use ClickFunnels, so just using that as my example. So if anyone has ever tried to use ClickFunnels analytics or ClickFunnels statistics or stats is what they call it. Let me just show you. I wasn't planning on showing you this. Actually, I don't think we have time. But ClickFunnels stats are horrible. That is like my only complaint about ClickFunnels. However, and what I'm gonna show you guys on Saturday during our live training is how to set up Google Analytics, which is so good and so helpful and it's free. And it, I know it's, it might sound like too techy or um, overwhelming to some people. I promise you, it literally took me three minutes, three minutes. And I will walk you through exactly how to do it because you can see you need to be able to troubleshoot where your funnel is breaking down to know, you know, which level of the funnel is messing it up. And then is it your hook, your story or your offer and how to figure that out. So that's why on Saturday, I'm going to show you how to set up Google analytics. Um, if you use click funnels, if you use another funnel builder, 
I'm sure you can incorporate Google Analytics into that funnel builder as well. Um, and if not, there's probably a workaround. Like you can, we can probably get you to where you need to be to make it work. Um, so that's where you would look at your analytics to kind of troubleshoot your opt-in page and your bridge page is Google Analytics. And again, I will show you guys on Saturday exactly how to get, get that set up. So you can see the number of people hitting your opt-in page and then hitting your bridge page. So you can see if there's a huge drop off. And if so, that will kind of clue you into where you need to tweak some stuff. Um, and then the last part of your funnel is sales and conversions. So your, the sales page, in other words, so the number of people hitting your sales page and the number of people actually converting. So um, whoever your affiliate partner is, so I can show you this on Saturday too, but your affiliate partner should provide some form of tracking and stats so that you can, you know, get an idea of the number of people actually reaching the sales page, the number of people actually reaching the checkout page, you should be able to access that. And generally good affiliate partners will make that um, readily available for you. So like Legendary Marketer um, or ClickBank, places like that. And I'll show you what that looks like again on Saturday.